over the past few weeks, we've had yet another rush of IPOs, including some deals that were very well received. Ah. Deals like CrowdStrike, that's a cloud-based cybersecurity company, and when I say well-received, I am putting it real lightly. The CrowdStrike deal was supposed to come at $19 to $23. Instead, it priced at $34, which is insane. Then immediately started trading at $63.50, which beggars believe. Buy, 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 buy. And, uh, not only that, but CrowdStrike, uh, which is ticker symbol CRWD, it, it's now $77 and change after hitting $79 earlier today. All right, what the heck are we supposed to do with this kind of smoke show IPO? I mean, on the one hand, CrowdStrike has so much in common with some other companies I like so much. Oh, the Red Hot Beyond Meat, although, you know, I think it's gotten a little out of control. And Zoom Video, which is really expensive. All three companies had triple-digit revenue growth. That's so hard to find last year. And, and their stocks have continued to scream higher since the initial spike because people, the, the mutual fund managers who love high growth, they're really drawn to triple growth, triple digit growth, because you don't get that very often. And look, I, I look, I, I was too skeptical, say it beyond me. See, I saw the stock scream higher, and I couldn't justify the valuation, so I didn't come to you and pound the table. But when we see this kind of move, it has nothing to do with valuation. So I've got to be a little more open-minded when it comes to CrowdStrike, even though I recoil at the thought of recommending something that's going from 34 to 77, actually 79 inch a day, in, in a week. I mean, the stock double. You know, it's very hard. But remember, Beyond Meat ended up being up 600% at one point. So, I mean, out of control. With that in mind, what's all the fuss about here? Before we dive into the financials, let's play a little Know Your IPO game, please, because you need some background. CrowdStrike bills itself as a new kind of cybersecurity firm. It's a play on the cybersecurity cloud. Okay, so in other words, it's not just what's known as on-premise. It actually protects the cloud. The whole point of their platform is to protect your systems across on-premise machines, virtualized machines, and cloud-based environments, all potentially in different places. The company handles endpoint security, threat intelligence, and incident response services, meaning digital forensics. Why, well, it's got everything from, it's got like a combination of FireEye meets Palo Alto meets Proofpoint. Maybe there's even a little cyber arc in there. But the really interesting thing for me is what puts the crowd in CrowdStrike. These guys use AI, artificial intelligence, to predict vulnerabilities and potential threats. They have a vast treasure trove of security data. And the bigger that that treasure trove gets, the more effective their AI algorithms become. CrowdStrike's system has two main aspects. First, there's what they call the lightweight in a agent, this is a little piece of software you install on your devices, which then deploys their whole security platform from the cloud. Because it's a cloud-based system, it doesn't need to use tons of processing power on your PC or your phone. Instead, they offload the really intensive computations to the cloud. In this respect, you know what? It's a lot like Kramer Fave Zscaler. I like to put these two head to head, frankly. Uh, that's another cloud based cybersecurity play that we had on last week, and I thought Zscaler was, was the boss. It was the bomb. And then this one comes around, and I start thinking, geez, maybe this is better than Zscaler. You need a head-to-head. -head. What differenti differentiates CrowdStrike is the second part of the story. It's what they call the threat graph. This is the part of the system that's on the cloud where they process, correlate, and analyze data from countless different devices and virtual machines. Now, this, that's where CrowdStrike's artificial intelligence algorithms come in handy. If you use on-premise security software, it's inherently limited, right? It only has so much data. It's in your PC. It can only use so much computing power. If you use the cloud, though, it's like being able to call in reinforcements. CrowdStrike's trying to take advantage of the fact that to get as much out of the cloud as possible to the point of using their AI to detect not just existing threats, but the future ones. And they have had a ton of success here. CrowdStrike recently unveiled a partnership with another company that I like very much, but the stock hasn't done very well, Dell, where customers can seamlessly buy CrowdStrike's platform whenever they purchase Dell's enterprise hardware. I want that. But, of course, I'm not the enterprise. Apparently, the customers do love it, though, because the company's got terrific dollar-based retention rate. This is a hugely important key metric. You know, I always try to give you the key metric that you'll got to move a stock. Key metric for cloud-based software stocks tells you how much new business they're getting from existing customers. And for CrowdStrike, that number was 147% last year, which means they're winning tons of additional orders from the user base. Their customers include 44 of the Fortune 100 and 9 of the top 20 major banks. And the company made a name for itself nailing state sponsored hackers. Do you remember when uh, North Korea went after Sony Pictures for that dumb Seth Rogen movie about Kim Jong-un a few years ago? These guys, this CrowdStrike, they figured it out. It took them less than 48 hours. What a marquee piece of business that was. Great story. But what about the numbers? 
Okay, last year the company t- total sales grew by 110% year over year. Their subscription revenue increased by 137%. And while CrowdStrike is still losing money, hey, don't fret here. That's because they're investing in the business, something that makes a ton of sense to me when you've got this kind of growth opportunity. You don't stop the growth in order to be able to show a profit. That's lunacy in this business. That said, the margins have, have substantially improved, even if they're still burning money. The balance sheet is pristine. Drilling down, last year the subscription customers more than doubled to 2,516. Their annual recurring revenue increased by 120% to 121% to $312 million. How about more recent numbers? CrowdStrike's guidance for the second quarter for the quarter that ended in April has their sales growing at about a hundred percent clip. Subscription revenue 110 to 115%. Uh, subscription customers up 104 percent, annual recurring revenue rising by 108 to 111 percent. No wonder you when you saw that, that full page ad in the paper today, you said, yeah, I don't blame those guys for bragging. The dollar based retention rate, how much business they're winning or losing from existing clients should keep expanding by 137 to 141 percent. People, these numbers are amazing. That means even if they didn't land a single new client, CrowdStrike would still have about a 40% growth rate, which would, most companies would kill for. And the vast majority of the companies in the high growth ones I talk about are nowhere near that. These are spectacular. Now, granted, the growth has decelerated a wee bit little, uh, versus last year, not by very much. And given the law of large numbers, that's impressive. Not quite as impressive as beyond me, but then again, what is? So it is no wonder that this stock exploded higher right out of the gate. While the underwriters tried to underprice the deal, something I heartily approve of, boy, did they ever learn from, uh, from Lyft, by the way, there was so much demand that they had to raise the price range dramatically, that midpoint rising from $21 to $29, then the IPO ultimately coming at $34 last week. Even though that was clearly a low ball number because the stock immediately spiked up 86% at the opening, going to $63.50, it hasn't looked back since. In fact, CrowdStrike tackled on another 10% gain, boom, yesterday. It's up nicely today. I've got to tell you, this may be... Oh, God, if we weren't so rich, I would tell you this is the best of the lot. But, and there's a very big but, at these prices, CrowdStrike is super expensive. Now, we're talking nosebleed expensive. The company currently has a $17.5 billion fully diluted market capitalization, which is a lot for a business that only generated $250 million in sales last year. Because CrowdStrike's not yet profitable. We need to value it on a price-to-sales basis. And using last year's numbers, it's selling at 70 times sales. 70. Put that in perspective. Even turbocharged cybersecurity stocks, where everybody wants to work, like Okta and Zscaler, traded less than 40 times last year's numbers. Only Zoom Video, another red high IPO, is more expensive at 84 times sales. I got to give you this stuff, people, because you got to know what you're dealing with. Trailing numbers aren't that useful. What about this year's estimates? Uh, or next year's? All right, we don't have a great read on how CrowdStrike will do going forward, but assuming it keeps delivering 100% growth this year and can hit 75% growth next year, that means the stock is selling for 35 times this year's sales and 20 times next year's sales. Still extremely pricey, more expensive than anything else I've mentioned except for Zoom. And if you use more conservative forecasts, you get even more ridiculous valuations. You might say it deserves a Zoom-like valuation. After all, they have a similar growth rate. But Zoom is actually turning a profit. And honestly, if you're using Zoom or Beyond Meat as your comparison for new deals, you're going to get yourself into trouble. It's Zscaler and Okta that are far more like this. They're far better comparisons. And they sell at about 25 times this year's sales forecast. If CrowdStrike got that kind of multiple, it would be a $55 stock, down 22 bucks from where it's currently trading. That's the kind of comparison thinking I need you to understand. Okay, it's much more expensive than Zscaler. You heard Zscaler last week. They're good. You've heard Okta multiple times. Hey, man, I think that Okta's the, I think Okta's terrific. Bottom line, look, I'm not saying CrowdStrike can't go higher. It's a fantastic company. These fast-growing IPOs have gotten pretty frothy, though. I'm just saying that I can't justify recommending it at these elevated levels versus buying Okta or Zscaler. I just can't stomach the thought of what might happen to the stock if something, anything, and it won't happen now, it won't happen now, goes wrong. We got to go to Stephen in Georgia. Stephen! Uh, Kramer, Bulldog Booyah. I like that. Go Bulldogs. Hey, since Fang has uncertainty right now and Microsoft hit the trillion dollar level last month, is that where young investors should focus their attention? Um, I've been doing a lot of work on Microsoft lately. It's part of a group of stocks I call the Creepers. It just creeps higher and higher and higher, and today's no different. Um, It's a trillion-dollar market cap, and it deserves it. Why? Because is there anyone more consistent when it comes to growth than Satya Nadella? 
He is just unbelievable. I mean, like, I would put a black T-shirt on and just wait at the door of Microsoft and just in case he would say, oh, a fellow black T-shirt guy, come on in. And I would. And you know what? I clean his desk, maybe polish his phone and stuff, just so I can ask him a couple of questions. Jerry in Texas. Jerry. Hey, Jim. How are you today? Not bad, Jerry. How about you? Good. Doing well. Hey, I'm calling about one of your favorites. You previously had the CEO on your show. And after their May 30th earnings report projecting a weak second quarter and a weaker outlook for 2019, they dropped 35% the next day. I'm down 30%. Should I buy, sell, or hold Zorro? I was very disappointed in that conference call. I was particularly disappointed that they talked about how it was a reset year. They needed that because the sales force needed to be refreshed. That was the first I learned of that. Uh, I admire the management. I think since we are a description economy, I did not like being blindsided. Uh, and uh, I was blindsided. And that's, uh, that's why this stock is not going to go anywhere, at least for another couple quarters. I repeat, even though I think at the beginning of the show, remember what I say, it's not about friends, it's about making money. And I was blindsided. All right, CrowdStrike is one heck of a smoke show IPO. It's a fantastic story. But I just can't justify these levels. Now that I can buy a company like an Okta or a Zscaler, they're cheaper. Stick with Kramer. Coming up, don't call it an IPO. This company is changing the conversation. Slack is creating a new world. And now they're headed for the public markets. Will Kramer cut them some slack? Find out when Mad Money returns. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.